Hi Fandango fans, it is Emily Uribe. I am here at Pixar Campus getting an exclusive look at Inside Out 2. But first, we're gonna give you an exclusive tour of the Pixar Campus. Now, I will be showing you some of the different activities they have here, and I am so excited because first off, they have a pool, which is really, really fun. And not only is it heated, but people swim in it year round. Keep in mind, we are in San Francisco, so it is cold a lot of the time. Being here at Pixar Campus, you learn a lot of fun facts because there's so many different areas that I have so many questions about. Like the area we're in right now. This is exactly where I believe they had sword fighting classes for anyone that watched Brave. We are here at the outdoor amphitheater where we can also see the Pixar lamp and the iconic Pixar ball. I'm trying to get this ball out of the way. So we are here in between the iconic Pixar lamp, which we know because every time before a Pixar movie, you see it hop up and down and it becomes the eye of Pixar. And we also have the iconic ball. Now this ball from one of Pixar's first ever short films, it is from Luxo Jr., which debuted in 1986. Now this ball has been in a ton of other movies. We've seen it in Toy Story. She's old, but she's really, really fun. We're on the basketball court, which is really fun. Now I'd assume that this is used pretty much all the time. And I'm gonna shoot a basket and then let's see how it goes. I think I just won the lottery, but I actually made that basket and there are people here to prove that. So let's go to the next location. Oh, hi. After my crazy game of basketball that I just played, they not only have that, they have a hammock where you can come after being in the pool. The gym is right across from me and this is my first time in a hammock. Now I'm here with Heimlich, who is from A Bug's Life, which came out in 1998. I've seen this movie so many times. The first memory I have of it was probably at five years old. And it's so awesome to see the memory of this movie still kept alive. This is an original piece from the ride that used to be at Disneyland's California Adventure. So we have Heimlich in all of his glory. We can't get in, but he is so cute to look at. Get ready with us to go see a lot more of the campus because we are here to celebrate Inside Out 2, which comes out in June. This is Joy, coming to you live in Riley's mind. Make some noise! Sadness is in the house! I am here with Jeanette, who was a producer's assistant on Inside Out 2, and we are so excited to share, so let's go ahead. We reserve these long hallways in our main building here as art galleries, and mm -hmm. this hallway that's on the western side of our building, Archives has been so great to bring out some original artwork from mm -hmm. some of our early films. So you'll see things here from the first Cars, from Monsters, Inc., Wally, -E, Bugs Life, Nemo, Up, Ratatouille. So some of this stuff is our early stages of Pixar. First one we have here is Ratatouille. We have our oh. lovely Remy here, done by Greg Dykstra, one of our amazing sculpt artists. Mm -hmm. And then again, I always like to remind people that this is before the film came out. Mm -hmm. This was the early stages of us figuring it out. So some really great exploration and really great artistic aesthetics too. So you will see different artists aesthetics as you go through the gallery here. Jay Schuster mm -hmm. did a lot more kind of architectural drawings that we have here in Carl cars, then some a lot beautiful like pastel kind of looks with mm -hmm. Bill Cohn. Um, here's some early Toy Story stuff which is so exciting to see. Wow. Um, like look at that amazing um, <laughs> scope of buzz that was done there. That's so cool. We're seeing dates on these and obviously yes. how early of a stage were some of these done and how many years before 2006 even happened? Usually it's years beforehand. Our films take it can be anywhere from four years to up to six years to make. Um, but that, are we including in that four years some of this art? It's kind of hard to say when we're testing yeah. that go on the first stages, but this is early on and lot, sometimes it's farther along in the process. We know we're gonna have this story plot line of them with the aliens mm -hmm. and so they're making those and sometimes it's just sketches on a napkin yeah. that are happening and sometimes we have those. We have napkins in our archives <laughs> with sketches on them. You were mentioning the year. One of the fun little things I like to always talk about on our tours is Toy Story, you know, came out in 1995. Yes. And one of the ways that you will know what year that comes out is if you know Lightning McQueen's racing number is 95. Oh, wow, and that's Easter a egg. wink and a nod to Toy Story coming out in 1995. So coming over here, you have some early ones from Bugs Life, which is really fun to see. The um, fly up there on the top is real popular with any of the kids that come by. <laughs> <laughs> will work for turds. Yes. I love pointing out some of the earlier stuff too here. And like one of the great things is you can look at all the different um, credits of how, who did it and how they did it. <laughs> this is all pencil on paper. It just blows me away here for Wally. -E. 
the attention to detail is unbelievable. Unbelievable. You give me a pencil and paper, I'm not doing oh, that. Oh, stick figure central. Like, <laughs> exactly. I can't do all that. <laughs> Here we have Rainbow Unicorn from Inside Out 1, the first film. She has her... Her script. Her she's, script. She's running lines. <laughs> yeah, she's getting ready for her new dream. And this character was really fun for fans in Inside Out. Yes. What character do you think matches that level of fandom in Inside Out 2? You know, it's interesting, I because we never know who it will be. You know, like I remember in Finding Nemo, Crush became yeah, one of the biggest characters. The celebrity. And we kind of were like, oh, I had no idea that <laughs> that would be the one that stood out. Already in the trailer, people are really connecting with Envy. Yes, so I Debbie. Yes. People love her. I mean, collecting hardware not? left and right. But I this. know, I know. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm so curious to see what people, what's going to come up for people. Yes. You know, I, I hesitate to say because I, we always get surprised. <laughs> we never know who it will be. So we'll see. Boy, are we so lucky we ran into you guys. I am here with Brie, who is an exhibitions designer for the Pixar Archive, and she's here to show us a couple pieces. Yeah, I've got some artwork from the first Inside Out film. This is all visual development um, concept art, uh, so that you can see a little bit of the trajectory of the design from the first film mm -hmm. to this one. Um, I think it's always really fun to uh, see where these characters started out. Um, now, this is before they really had any solid understanding of art had made decisions about what the characters are going to look like so they're in full experimental phase right here you can see some of the characters are looking like themselves like anger clearly is very visible <laughs> here um, but the rest of the characters really don't look anything like the ones in the film um, and i actually thought this was really interesting because at this point in the production fear was a more a center part of the story but mm -hmm. i feel like there's some there's a little bit of anxiety coming through in this character <laughs> Um, and you can even see in here, it says, joy is gone, fear takes over. So <laughs> I think, that, and fear is even orange in this one, which I, I thought was really funny because of how prominent anxiety plays a role in Inside Out 2. Oh, this so is so cute. here are some really cool collages by Albert Lozano. Um, he does wow. some re really fantastic work. Um, now we were hearing um, earlier in a meeting that from the production designer that mm -hmm. shapes really are taken into account when designing specifically these characters. Would yeah. you say that their shapes hold up during this process that they're drawing or do they change and you can notice that they change? This was a really early concept trying to um, sort of figure out the shape language of the characters. Um, they do change some and you can also see that there's some, some characters here that didn't end up in the first <laughs> film. We have hope and pride. Um, but for the most part they're you know, you can start to see it take shape. Sadness is, is pretty, they, you know, they knew that she was gonna be blue and teared up shaped. Um, and anger was gonna be a red square, mm -hmm. but they're still definitely figuring it out here. Um, and then it's in this one, you can see actually sadness reminds me a lot of embarrassment, um, embarrassment yes. in this one, yeah. So you can see how some of the those initial ideas, those seeds have carried over into the, um, into the second film. I have to show you one really amazing piece. So this um, was done <gasps> as a concept for oh, wow. abstract thought. Um, in the scene where joy, sadness, and bing bong become abstracted yes. in, in their shapes. And so they really you know, had to do a lot of thinking about what that was gonna look like mm -hmm. in the film. Um, all the way to doing 3D mock-ups for that. Wow. Um, so right here we have a mock-up of joy in her abstract form, and this is a paper sculpture. Oh my gosh. Would you say this is cardstock? Yeah, I think it's cardstock, um, glue. If that's how that paper yeah. is <laughs> Yeah, it's just a, a firm paper. I'm not exactly sure wow. what kind. Um, but this was helping them visualize this concept in three dimensions. Wow. Now, I bid you all farewell, but this is not the last you've seen because I'm going to bring you along so you can do some activities with me here at Pixar Campus. Make sure that you stay tuned and follow along for more. And I cannot wait for everyone to see Inside Out 2 in theaters.